Okay, I've got it turned on then. Yeah, I hope everything everybody's okay with that. If you're not, just like turn your video off or, but I got a couple, you know, obviously, like I said, people going to the rallies and they still wanted to see the information later. So we're gonna record this too. All right, so let's share my screen. I'm just gonna date myself about old research card catalogs. <laughs> I We had card catalogs just on the way out when I was in library school, so. <laughs> So can everybody see? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So, um, so a couple of things we're gonna do. Oh, there's another person. I'm just gonna introduce myself and talk about um, my connection with Cherry Hill. Um, give some very basic overview of library research. I mean, I'm here. So if you need me, just send me an email um, and I can help you find at least some libraries to go to or some things to look at. I also may have a little bit of extra access that maybe some folks don't have that I can, I can help you like find that exact article that you want. Um, and then we're gonna like take a look at the Moodle classroom that I've been adding resources to. And as probably many of you know, um, we don't, we haven't purchased a licensing agreement from some of these database companies. It's extremely expensive. Um, however, and we'll talk about this in a bit, um, open source access is getting a lot better. So there is a lot of open source databases available online. Sometimes they're a little trickier to search, um, but they are available. And thankfully, a lot of our peeps are putting their stuff on open access. So some of the faculty at Cherry Hill, other pagan academics are putting their things online for free. So. That's, that's very helpful for us. And then I'm hoping we'll just have a little bit of time for questions if somebody has specific questions for me. So um, I have been in some capacity at Cherry Hill, a volunteer, a student for probably about 10 years or so. I was at a PantheaCon many years ago where my friend Brandy Williams, who lives in my area, um, was with me um, in one of the, the social rooms and she introduced me to Mac a Nightmare and said, this is somebody you might wanna talk to about being on the board because you know she does a lot of pagan things around Seattle. So I talked to Maca for a while there in the social, in one of the social rooms. And then a couple months later, I was, I got a call from somebody on but hey, you know, do you think you want, might want to do this? And I was like, yes, yes, I do. So um, I was on the board from 2013 to 2016. And then after I um, was off the board, I decided to do the community ministry certificate, which was so extremely helpful to my work in the Seattle Pagan community. And I completed that in 2018. I've taken several insight classes, like even before I was on the board, I think I took a couple of insight classes. And I've taken now two graduate level classes. And currently I'm helping out with the library. I'm the seminary librarian right now. And I'm also a part of, of the Votaries. You haven't joined the Votaries Association. You should do so. Am I frozen? No, just for a moment. Okay, how much did we miss? Uh, only from am I frozen forward. Perfect, okay. So um, I'm currently, like I said, 
seminary librarian, part of the votaries. If you haven't joined the votaries, you should join the votaries. It's really great to get together and talk about all things pagan and ministry. Um, my background, I have a BA in English literature and a certificate of liberal arts from Simon Fraser University. And I took my master's in library and information studies at University of British Columbia. And then once my husband and I were both done our degrees, we moved to Seattle um, for his work in 1999. And my husband is an attorney in downtown Seattle. And my daughter, whose picture is up there, is um, graduating from high school. And I have two dog co-workers who are on Zoom from time to time. If we have a meeting, sometimes they jump up into my lap. Um, Pixie, who's a Westie, and Ruby, who is a French bulldog. And I just wanted to have a short section um, just to to acknowledge that our library at Cherry Hill Seminary is named after um, Judy Harrow, who was one of the people who was an early developer of the Cherry Hill program. And, it, you know, there is nothing else like, I mean, I have looked. There is, even if there's like other schools that say they teach pagan ministry, it's not like what we have. And so I really want to acknowledge, you know, the people that worked really hard to make it what it is. Um, Mac and Nightmare is one of them too. Holly, obviously, all these people that have been working so hard to get us where we're at. Okay, academic research publishing. So uh, most of you who've, who've had been in an academic site setting before have used probably mostly proprietary sources. So if you go into the library, the databases that they've paid the licensing fee for um, and that the librarian can, can help you search for scholarly articles. Um, these are fee-based um, and for our purposes, Go to a library that has borrowing and database privileges um, and get a library card for that. Um, and there are places, especially Am I back? Okay. Usually the proprietary sources are better indexed and there's more advanced searching options. So that is a good thing about using the proprietary sources. If you have a public academic library nearby, it really go and get a library card for them. And uh, you'll get access to quite a lot of stuff, especially if you're alumni. Um, then we have open access publishing. And this is accessible on the internet without a fee-based licensing agreement. And there's been a sort of slow, steady movement towards this model, but obviously there's a lot of stakeholders involved in you know, whether this is gonna take, take place or not. And then we have hybrid. Um, so some journals, you can go to their website and they'll have some things that you can search for free and some things that will be behind a paywall. So if you know that something is in a specific journal, you know, go check out the website and see if it's possible that you might have access online. So this is the open access publishing movement. Um, we are starting to see a lot of scholars publishing open access. Um, usually, and some of you obviously know this, you don't get paid to be to put your article in a journal. It's prestige, it's you need to publish to be in your particular um, school. Well, there's Jeffrey. Um, 
and the reason that we so the reason that we haven't really moved more to open access is because of huge profits for publishing companies. They take their free articles and they put it in a in a certain package and the librarians basically have to buy it um, or else not have those not have those materials available for their students, which is hard. So as you can expect, um, more tuition the school gets, higher profile the school is, the better access you're going to have. And then the smaller schools, um, a lot of them have had to basically not buy those licensing agreements because it's too expensive. And then that causes the, the environment, the scholarly environment to kind of get shut down to a certain type of, you know, there's only certain people that can, can use it. Um, so if you're interested in <laughs> some of these things like I am, um, I, would, I would encourage you to watch Paywall, The Business of Scholarship. Um, it, it's a really good, really short documentary that kind of explains um, the open access movement and why publishing com companies don't want you to publish open access. Okay, online resources and library cards get them, load, load up on them. Um, I have one for King County. I have one for Seattle Public Library. I have one for the University of Washington. Um, collect all the, all the cards you can. And when you're doing your studies, you'll get certain access at certain places and it'll be really helpful. Okay, so here is the first part of the terms and conditions for the University of Washington Library. So as you can see, I can take out 30 items. There's some restricted resources that I can't have access to, and I can't do interlibrary loan, although Lord knows I've tried, but they don't, they don't want to to do all that extra work for somebody that's, that's not a student or faculty. But you will get remote access, uh, you will get in library access. So if I drive to UW, get in the library, then I can use the, the online databases there. So that'll be really helpful. Public libraries, are also another good place to look. It depends what you're searching for. Um, they have a lot of, they'll have all the newspapers, they'll have census things, they'll have things about your local, um, your city, state, local governments. Um, but it's mostly things that are for the average citizen. There usually will be one scholarly database that's available. So take a look for those. Um, and we'll take a look at one of them here in a bit. But if you need statistics, that sort of thing, um, some examples, Gale Academic One File is one that, that we have. You might also find a ProQuest research library. That one might be also available at the public library. Um, and those ones you can search from home. You just need your library card number and your PIN, and you can search from home. You don't even know, need to go into the library for that. The interlibrary loan system works. Um, however, it does take a while. So if you know for sure you need a certain book, um, I would put in your request for that book early in your research. So special libraries are another place um, that you can look for information. So special libraries are anything where there's like a specific discipline or a specific subject matter. Um, we have one here in Seattle called the um, Seattle Metaphysical Library. And that's all it it just has occult and metaphysical topics. Um, 
the one we have on display here, there's Don with his mask on, um, is the Addison and Research Library. Um, and there's, they have their entire library catalog online. Now you need to go in to research, you can't borrow from them. But the, the catalog itself, having the catalog itself online is really great because then you can look through and see what's available on the subject you're looking for. And then maybe you can find it at another, another place. Okay, so if you're looking for a specific item, Um, it used to be that when you are searching for a book, you would look in catalogs. And if you were searching for an article, you would look in article databases. And that's it. Now things have changed quite a bit. And there's sort of this horizontal look at, at resources. And so all types of resources can be searched together. So this, this could be, this can be useful, but you're gonna get a lot back. Um, so for myself, if I'm looking specifically for a book, I will generally just look in catalogs. I'll look in WorldCat, Google Books, open access book catalogs, academic library catalogs, public library catalogs um, to get the information on how to find it. And then for articles, in, in our space at Cherry Hill, you can use open access aggregators and journal articles, as well as the proprietary databases at a public or academic institution that you have access to. And I've put some of those open access aggregators and some of the open journal databases in the library for you to look at. Now you're researching a specific topic. This is where most people find themselves. And it's, it is helpful to do some preliminary searching in either a subject specific encyclopedia. Um, there are some open access ones. There are also uh, subject specific encyclopedias in the library. Um, there's one specifically for religion. Um, and those are good places to get ideas. Another, you know, you, you might have something where you find an, a journal article in a bibliography from an article you're already looking at. Um, that's a good place to find, you know, comb, comb the bibliographies of articles you've, you've looked at that um, are, are really good articles for your particular topic and you'll find a lot more resources to, to look at. Um, and I see Jeffrey um, joined us a while ago. I mean, looking at Wikipedia, seeing what, you know, if it's, it's, you know, they have really good bibliography sometimes too that will help you to, to find more resources. Um, and then the other place that I've found that is very helpful is looking at specific uh, library guides. So if you go into any academic library and you look at their website, often there's a subject specific librarian that's created an entire page about alternative religion or something else, paganism, um, comparative religion. And you can go through and look at all the things that they've gathered for the students that are taking that class. And those are really helpful as well. And OK, so a couple of things about searching. Always use the advanced search option. When you come to a page, it'll always have a keyword search. Um, Unless you are really good and you know exactly how that particular database works, um, you won't get back as, as good of things as if you use the advanced search option. 
what they do is they take the Boolean operators and or not, and they make it into a form. And then also there's some other things like truncation of certain words. So like you get psychology or you get psychology, psychological, psycho, uh, you know, you get like all the different words that end with different endings. So definitely look in there and look at the help and the tips. So if there's something that says information, click on it and see how that particular database is searched. Um, now, one of the ones that would be is extremely helpful for you all would be the, the ATLA Religions Database. Um, this is something that's produced by the American Theological Library Association. It's an EBSCO database. The three large database companies, EBSCO, Gale, and ProQuest, all are searched differently. Um, and, you know, if you need help, um, with a specific one, just let me know. And um, I can sort of print out something that has, you know, some things that will help. Also at the academic libraries, um, you know, depending on how busy they are <laughs> and how many students and faculty are asking them questions, they may help you um, with your research as well. So those subject specific library librarians are amazing and wonderful. And they, you know, I've, I've used them many, many times myself, and I should know some of this, but they just, they know their subject matter really, really well. And um, a lot of the open access materials are very similar. So, but again, look and see how, because I there's some of them I've noticed that will, instead of using and they'll use a plus. And instead of not, they'll use a minus. Um, so if you don't know that and you start doing da 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 da, you know, this and this, it, it's probably not, it's probably just going to search the keywords again. So that's just something to keep in mind. Take a look and see how they, they, they want you to search their particular thing. So here is just a screenshot of, um, I think a Gale uh, public library uh, academic database. So you can see here what I'm talking about. Like you, you put in your terms, these are drop downs. So if you know the subject, you could put it, and, and obviously these are, uh, you know, Library of Congress said subject headings. So, but if you know the subject you're looking for, really good way to search because it's all it's all going to be exactly what you're looking for. And also has a drop down, so that it'll have or or not in here as well. They also have proximity. So, if you're searching for something where you want Two of, your, two of your key terms to be close together. Um, so there's a way to do that. Quotation marks, wild cards. Wild cards is sort of like, you know, like another, like what I talked about before, like you can put, you can truncate a word or if there's like another word that is similar, it will look that up at the same time. Over here, you can search just for full text, just for peer reviewed journals. So if your instructor only wants you looking at peer reviewed, you can click on that so you won't get other stuff back. Um, so these are just, you know, some of the things that um, you can do with, you know, the library databases. And here is an ATLA database record. So ATLA has Nova Religio, um, which is a really good scholarly article for us. Um, 
and so I just looked up, I just screenshot a random, a random uh, record. So you could take a look at it. So if you see here, religious movements, popular religion, cults, Japan, United States, these are all subjects. And these are also clickable. So when you get when you're in the database, if you say, ah, that's the subject heading I'm looking for, you keyword, you keyword search for something, you find the perfect article. And then now you can see that these are um, the actual subject heading that you should be using. Um, if you need help, um, I'm totally uh, available. Um, just email me at librarian at cherryhillseminary.org. I do have a Zoom that you can, um, you know, we can Zoom and chat about it. Um, go and get those college and university library cards and public as well. And, you know, look up those research, research guides that we talked about. Now, let's see if this works. Does everybody see the library? Okay, there's our information about Judy and some tributes. Here's the page about some of the questions that, like, let, well, let's click on it and see. Dana, so, I'm, I'm, I don't think we're seeing it. Oh, okay. Maybe your I, is anybody else seeing it? Maybe I need to get out of PowerPoint. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, let's go about this a different way. Is that working now? Yes. OK. So this was actually put in by the previous librarian, but it's super useful. So um, you know, just let me know kind of where you're at in the world <laughs> so I can help find out where, where resources will be available to you. Um, and then, yeah, just give me as much information as you can about your topic, and then I will get back to you. Here's where we have our master's thesis. So those are, are great to look at. I, I have a little bit different view. So some of this might be a little bit different. Here I put in just like Google Scholar, Deep Dive, an, another online um, scholarly search engine. Um, search engines, again, they're really good at looking at broadly books, articles, master's thesis, you know, all these different types, and it'll bring up all of those. Here's some of the open access aggregators. And what I tried to do is put as short a tag as I could so that you would know what you're looking at, but um, not have this big, huge paragraph um, so that it'd be a little easier to scroll. So here, directory of open access journals, one of the big open access databases, 7,000 open access journals, all searchable at the article level on the internet. Here's the books. And then these again are, I, I also put in some subject specific ones. So here's the open access theological library. And then of course, Library of Congress is in here. Here's the open access portion of JSTOR. JSTOR is also a really good 
a database to check if you're at your academic library um, for articles. Um, and because uh, it has a, a big humanities focus. Internet Archive and Internet Archive Scholar still have a lot of good things, although um, during the pandemic, Internet Archive put up a lot of books full text that you could borrow for an hour or borrow for a week. Um, and the uh, scholar scholarly publishing copyright folks kind of decided that wasn't cool. So those are gone now. But anything that isn't um, copyrighted, they have a, a lot of the older, older works available on there still. Here's the Harvard Pluralism Pop Project that we've used a lot. And these, again, these are all databases that can be searched. Here's religion. And I tried to give you a little, so there, there's a lot of these theology ones that have a lot of um, Old Testament, New Testament, um, uh, articles and such, but there, there's other things in there that are, are useful. I looked up something on homiletics the other day out of here and it was, it was good. Um, so here I put, when doing research at a library or, or, or university or college library. So these ones we don't have access to, but again, there, some of it will be available. Um, and when you go into, the, into an academic library, you'll be able to, so ATLA, very useful, JSTOR, very useful, PsycInfo, if you're taking um, any of um, the counseling and psychology classes, um, that's where you're going to find a lot of that information. And the EBSCO Religion and Philosophy database is also really useful. Then I put in a section on data and statistics. So a lot of us know about the Pew Research Center, um, just looking at different religions and can um, let's see. So yeah, these have statistics about religion, these ones. Journals and journal articles. Um, I've been using academia.edu quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of scholars that are putting things up on academia.edu completely for free, and the search is actually pretty good. And we'll take a look about uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Here's some of the catalogs that I talked about. Google Books, WorldCat. Here's some of the li other uh, library catalogs that you can search. Um, Valdosta, uh, Adocentin. The New Alexandrian Library doesn't have a catalog up, but um, they do have a lot of materials if you're in the area and can visit them. Seattle Metaphysical Library. I think this is one that, that Holly sent. Really, really good if you're looking at for e Egyptian um, information. And well, Wikipedia is on here too, of course. Um, here's some online encyclopedias some of the places that have the sacred texts online. These are theses and dissertations that are open access. Then I added some um, research, writing and copyright fair use information and writing information, some citation information. And then at the very end, there's, if I see something that's real, I think would be useful, I, I've kind of put it in this section. So 
So I'm just going to go up. And we're going to look at WorldCat. Now you guys tell me if anything goes wrong. Okay, so let's see. Well, we're going to go to the advanced search. And we know that we have um, Graham Harvey coming to Cherry Hill to do a seminar for us this summer. And we're interested in reading some of his books. So we go to the advanced search. We're going to search by author. Oops, spelling counts. And let's do veganism. So there's a lot of records for him. These could also be different um, editions of the same book. Okay, let's take a look at this one. And as you can see, when you click on the title, you've got subject headings that you can use for a more specific search. And if you put in your postal code, it will tell you where the closest libraries are that have that book. So for me, University of Washington um, would be the closest one that I could, I could find it. And then WorldCat is also super helpful. And, oh, I don't know if you can see this, with our little faces there. But to the right of the screen, it'll tell you where you can buy it. So if it's on a books or um, something like that, it'll tell you, it'll take you right to the, to the link so you can <laughs> purchase it if you want to. And you can also search uh, WorldCat for journals to find out which libraries have the journal you're looking for. Um, let's see if this works. So if we look at pomegranate, and here it is. And then to find copies of it, it tells you like, well, we, you can search at, that it's an EBSCO database or that this is their website. And you're able to search it there. So I think unless anybody has questions about searching other things, I could bring up academia.edu or, 
or does anybody have any questions about other stuff? Oh, let's look at the chat. I said to use the chat, didn't I? <laughs> okay, Jeffrey said bingo. Bingo about what, Jeffrey? <laughs> About using Wikipedia for oh, okay. sources and references that they cite. Right. Yes. Comb Wikipedia. It's a lot better than it used to be. Back in the days when I was a student at library school, it wasn't super useful. And now I can look up stuff and it has an entire bibliographic record for certain topics that are so useful. Um, maybe Jeffrey might like to share a little teeny bit about that since he's on the board of Wikipedia. Or Wikipedia. Well, no, well, not, not the board of the foundation, but the board of several of the groups. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the adage in Wikipedia is never use Wikipedia, never cite Wikipedia itself. Instead, focus on the sources that are cited in the articles. Um, because uh, the general guideline is every claim that somebody makes should have a, um, a reliable and credible source that is cited to support the claim that's made. So, thank you. Oh, and Diane went to UBC. Yay! <clears throat> yeah, I went... I did my undergrad there. Oh, great. And she has a question in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Sci-Hub. But I can't access it in Italy. Hmm. I'll have to look and see what might be a good substitute. Is it because it's sort of kind of are, are they, think, are, is it because it's a, illegal or? I, I think they've blocked it due to copyright issues, but um, right. I haven't even had sex trying, a success trying to use um, like a, a VPN. Okay. Yeah, it's like nothing I've done works over there. So I've just been like emailing people and saying, can you find this for me? Um, yeah, and you know, you can do that. I'm happy to search Sci-Hub, you know. Um, you know, I've heard of too many people, you know, especially like looking up, you know, diseases that their family members have and they can't get the research because Elsevier is completely in charge of it and it's so expensive to get, yeah. Um, just don't tell anybody I said that, but I will. If you need it, I'll try and look for it. I don't know why it's not working there. I'm assuming it's probably because they're blocking it. Yeah, that's that's the message I get that it's been blocked. So yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm guessing it's probably similar in other EU countries as well. Yeah. If I could, may I share about my uh, alumni? membership yes alumni excellent we would love to be uh telling you that we have all of this in the cherry hill library but at about thirty-five thousand a year for these subscriptions that's not likely to happen real soon but um if you have a, a bachelor's of any kind you can join your usually your alumni association and one of the benefits is access to the library and since everything's digital now um, my, my membership is $55 a year which is the cost of two three four scholarly articles if I were having to pull them down um, right. the other thing I wanted to say is we do have a growing relationship with Valdosta State University and they're New Age, New Age, occult religions and paranormal library collection. And, uh, you know, we're trying to convince the hires up 
higher ups that uh, perhaps we can work out something to let our students pay a library fee to VSU in the future. But meanwhile, they do free programs, which I've been posting to the our lists and um, they the person in charge of this collection is pagan and great guy. Yeah, and I, I've been in communication with with him and um, they have some amazing things that they're they're adding. And he actually asked me a little while ago, oh, I saw you have all the Georgian uh, tradition of Wicca uh, newsletter scanned. And I'm like, yes, I do. And he's like, can I have them? I'm like, sure. So now those are all in there too. <laughs> but they have like ephemera, like old newspaper art, like just a ton of things if you're researching like the history of certain traditions or, yeah, it's amazing. I think Jenny has a question. Do I see it? It, yeah, Jenny. It's, it seemed a bit long to type out, although I, I think Holly touched on it. Uh, this is a fabulous library and I would love to have access to it after I graduate. Can I like join votaries and maybe pay a library fee? Well, here's the thing. Currently the library is in Moodle. Mm -hmm. Moodle is going to be replaced by Populi pretty soon. Uh -huh. And so therefore, <laughs> um, I am probably gonna have to move all these resources. So what we're thinking about doing is maybe having a link on the Cherry Hill website. Because oh. all, all the, everything that I have gathered and that I will be gathering is open access. There, I mean, I can't put anything up there that's closed mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, so I think that, you know, we'll just let everybody use it. And, and frankly, if you go to any of the other big research libraries, like if you look at Yale, at their theological seminary, they have huge lists of open access um, mm -hmm. things too. And, you know, that's where I stole a lot of the things from. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, you won't have to worry that you can't get into Moodle because I think what we're going to do is try to make it available. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about down the future because that would be a great resource to have as, as I do my ministry in the future. It's like, oh, I got to research stuff for my sermon and I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, weren't, I don't want it on this topic, but I need something more specific. And it'd be like that library stuff would be a fantastic resource. And yeah. also if you make it public, which it sounds like you're going to do, it would be a great service to the public. Um and attract a lot of attention to Cherry Hill. So I am I am all for it. Yeah, and I'm hoping I can organize it a little saner. I mean, it's kind of hard because Moodle is a class, it's a classroom, it's a Moodle classroom, basically, mm -hmm. that I tried to just add resources to. So that's why it's just all in one big long list, list you yeah. know, as opposed to, you know, having it broken out a little bit easier to find things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a wonderful but, resource. Thank you. But you know, oh yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's all out there. It's just sometimes it's hard to find it when you're looking for something um, specific. But yeah, like academia.edu, like a lot of our faculty members, like I have found things from Sabina Magliocco. I've, you know, there's things on there from jo Giovanna Parmigiani. Um, Chaz Clifton. There's a lot of people um, that are putting their their article, making their articles available outside of the scholarly publishing loop. And I would encourage all of you when you make all make all your articles <laughs> open access too, and let me know where I can find them. Does anybody have any other questions?
I'd like to just say thank you, Dana. Uh, we're just uh, thrilled still, only a few months into your tenure, to <laughs> have you uh, serving in this uh, capacity. It's really, really wonderful, and we appreciate your dedication. My experience with librarians is that you guys rule and uh, are always there for us. And in this age of disinformation and confusion, it's great to know that librarians can track it down and find out yeah. what's going on. Um, so thank you for everything you're doing and thank you for doing this today. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like I said, librarian at Cherry Hill, you know, I'm, 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 I feel like Sherlock Holmes sometimes <laughs> trying to find that thing. Oh. I use you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, this was just great and so informative. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. Okay, well, that's all I have for today. And like I said, I'm here. I don't like to be, be bored. So. <laughs> I'll see you all soon. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. This was wonderful. Thank Bye. you. Thanks. Bye.